So in our last video, we talked about how Thomas Hunt Morgan studied Drosophila melogasters, or the little fruit flies, and look at specific traits in these fruit flies and realize that something had to do with the chromosomes in the terms of their inheritance, which means the chromosomes played a role in the inheritance of of the generation across generation and traits across the generations the same way that Mendel had referred to in his studies and he was the first one to realize that there were different types of genes just to explain Mendel's factors and there were this, these were alleles and different chromosomes and he was the first one to explain how these alleles moved during meiosis and there was things like crossing over happening and he actually was the first one to study the patterns of inheritance which are explainable through chromosomes in other words, actually quantifying and analyzing the particle that Mendel referred to as a genetic factor. He was not the one to discover these particles. They were theorized even later by Darwin, as Gamules, and Walter Fleming, who actually discovered them by studying mitosis and seeing the cell division process and the complicated steps taken to the pre preserve the, the, these structures across the cell division and making sure that both cells receive the same amount, which seemed to indicate the importance of, of these structures. And then by the time Morgan was actually studying this, 50 years after Walter F Fleming, meiosis had also been studied. They noticed the differences between meiosis and mitosis, and they knew that the actual formation of gametes had everything to do with the separation and, re and reduction of the chromosome numbers. And so Thomas Morgan takes it a step further and looks at what actually happened gen with the genetics and with the inheritance connected to the events that's happening on meiosis. So all the things we talked about when we talked about the meiosis lecture, about the separation of the chromosomes indicating the independent of assortment and things like that that Mendel saw and the return of the recessive phenotype during the F2 generation. All of these things were things that Morgan actually studied in the chromosomes and he actually looked at both fruit flies and peas because he wanted to identify the factors that Mendel was talking about. So he actually went back to the peas and studied them. So let's see here on the screen what typically would happen for uh, a cell, one of those chromosomes of the Mendel's peas, for example. All right, now, uh, this is just an example. It's not exactly what happens in a pea. It will have more chromosomes than this, but let, let's just show you. Uh, basically the two different variations that can actually happen because of meiosis. So look that this is also not including crossing over at all. This is no. This is just a clear-cut homolog separation that we're looking at in this slide. But either way, this cell that we see here has actually two different types of chromosome. Uh, it has the chromosome type G and the chromosome type Y. So you can follow them because there are the chromosomes type G are going to be on the left side and I'm going to track them in the red color. So the chromosomes type G are going to be on the left side over here. And then the chromosomes type Y are going to be on the right side. I'm going to be tracking them in the blue color. Now notice that for the chromosome type G, you have a big G and you have a little g. Now notice that each chromosome has two, has two Gs marked because remember this went, underwent the S phase. So originally what you had was just a big G chromosome and a little g chromosome but then after after the assay phase happened each one of them became doubled with the sister chromatids and that's why it's showing up as a double g or a double little g but either way that's how it is but notice that after meiosis one is completed uh, particularly after anaphase one like we talked about when we did meiosis big g goes one way and little g goes the other way and you can actually see that happening here or the separation of the homologs. Now, there's a, remember, there's a 50-50 chance of this happening. So they, this could have been backwards, right? All right. The other thing that could happen, and you can see that happening here as well, is that with the Y, and the same thing is happening with the Y here, it's also heterozygous for the, for the Y, because it has a big Y and a little Y. But one went this way, and the other one went that way. And so you can see the separation of the homologs. But you see that what happened in this case was that... that all the homozygous dominants stuck together and all the homozygous recessives stuck together, which means when you're going to go through meiosis 2, you're, you're also going to get something that looks like this. All the cells here on this group are going to be homozygous dominant for both traits, and all of the cells on this group are going to be homozygous recessive for both traits. All right. Now, in the bottom, the separation of homologs were, were, was a little different, and the big, the big G 
actually went up this way and the little g went up this way just like the previous one however on the opposite time we actually got the big big y to go down here and the little y to go up there so what you end up with is a cell that's big g little y or little g big y and same thing is going to happen here on your final gametes after meiosis 2. Now what's happening here then is that all these gametes are going to be uh, homozygous do well dominant for one trait but recessive for the other. So what exactly does happen? Do you get something that looks like that or something that looks like this? And this is basically the question that Thomas Hunt Morgan starts with. Um, and it's the same question Mendel had. Is there some sort of attachment between these chromosomes? Does chromosome big G always come together with big Y? Now Mendel answered this question and said no. There's independent assortment of, of genes. In other words, these factors assort independently, which means there's an equal chance for you to get something that looks like that than to get something that looks like this. So number one is equally, there's an equal chance for number one to happen that there's for number two to happen. However, if something like number one was happening every time, in other words, the trade of number one were always together, then it raises the question, is there something at play here that contradicts Mendel's theory of inheritance? Mendel clearly put, put out that there's an independent assortment or equal chance of each one of those arrangements or combinations. Um, so there is no grouping of the genome. You do not get, a, if you know, remember we talked about this when we did uh, independent assortment videos, so make sure you, we watch it, but there is no 3 to 1 ratio. There is no grouping of traits when you look at two traits being carried on together. Instead, you get a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio when you look at two hybrids crossing. We talked about this, and you get an independent assortment of traits. At least this is what Mendel looked like as he, as he looked at these traits uh, in his things. And we talked about meiosis and the separation of the homologs as the source of this independent assortment of chromosomes. So, however, which one is happening? We talked about this. What a look at something like that. Uh, typically, a lot of the people who have red eyes t tend to have freckles. And you see that in this picture here. Uh, so, it's a trait that seems to, co to travel together every time someone has red eyes 90% of the time they had freckles and, seen, and that's just an example of a human trait that seems to always travel together. So you're not actually getting like what Mendel said about independent assortment. It seems to be two traits traveling together. And you, you would think the same thing is true about, say for example, so the color of eyes and the color of the hair. So for example, do you always have black hair? That means you always have dark color. But you see here that in this picture, this is not the case. You know. There are African American people who actually have light color eyes. So sometimes it seems like the genes are traveling together and breaking the Mendel's theory of independent assortment, or in other words, these genes are somehow linked. And then sometimes it seems like genes that should be linked are somehow broken, or the link between them is somehow broken. And the first person to realize was Thomas Hunt Morgan with his work with the fruit flies. And let's talk about how we actually figure this out on the next video. I'll see you guys then.